Okay, so now we're looking at an MMI scenario. So you're in a supermarket and find an elderly man in his pyjamas asking which room is his daughter's. What would you do? So we need to consider some things here. So firstly, you're aiming, the skills that you're trying to put across are some skills that you've gained hopefully from either work experience, particularly volunteering if you're caring for people, because typically people do things in uh, elderly, elderly care homes so that they get experience talking to people whose communication skills are impaired. Usually they'll have come across somebody who has dementia or has some sort of cognitive impairment. And then this is adapting your communication skills to that sort of person who may not understand things, is a bit disorientated, because clearly somebody who's in a supermarket asking about their daughter, where their daughter's room is in their pyjamas is probably um, wandered off from a care home. Okay. So when you approach this, you need to understand, demonstrate your understanding that this gentleman may be confused. Um, and also you need to understand that, so patients with dementia, especially when they're scared and in a situation that's unfamiliar to them, they can have a propensity to become violent. So we need to make sure that, you know, it, that it is safe to approach it. This man's not going to hurt you because we would deal with the, the situation very differently if they were. And is there anybody nearby? You're in a supermarket, so there are plenty of people nearby that can help you out. So basically asking somebody to, to offer some help with, uh, uh, with uh, dealing with this. Okay, and then, so we'll start the intervention. So start by approaching slowly and asking the patient if they need help or the, the uh, elderly person in this situation. And if he's confused, we want to get him to a safe place. So let's say it's in a supermarket aisle, uh, you know, there's potential for, let's say, water to be on the floor, he could slip and, and break his hip, for example. So you want to take them to the security area or, or maybe a bench where they can sit down. And then you need somebody to call 999. So ideally, it's best to utilize the person that you've recruited, whose help you've recruited, and get them to call while you keep an eye on the person to make sure that they don't hurt themselves or cause themselves any more danger. And while this is going on, you need to provide reassurance to the patient. Like I say, they'll probably be scared, so make sure they're safe. Now, some of the don'ts are fail to act on your moral duty. So, you know, there is no... There's nothing saying that you have to help this person, but you want to be a doctor. You want to be the kind of person that wants to help people. So I would hope that you are the kind of person that does feel a moral obligation to help this person who's in need. So um, not uh, another thing that you don't want to do is walk by. You don't want to just completely ignore the situation and hope that it goes away. You are kind of volunteering yourself as that person in society who's the one who's going to step up and take action towards helping this person. And then the other thing, um, not checking it's safe to approach. So again, if you get hurt, say this person is, although being an old person with dementia, they might be quite strong. They might hit you. And let's say in the extreme scenario that they, um, they knock you out and, and you become unconscious. And who's, you know, what you see to anybody in that situation. Firstly, you're an extra burden because now they have to look after two people and you've not done anything to make the situation better. So making sure that it's safe is really important. And the final thing is not getting help. You have lots of things that you need to do. You need to, you don't know where security is in the supermarket. So you're going to struggle to take them there. You're going to struggle to keep an eye on them because ultimately their safety is the most important thing. So you need to keep an eye on them and make sure that they're safe. And you can't multitask by doing that and also trying to find, uh, maybe say you don't have phone signal and you have to go outside and call 999. Loads of things that can happen. So getting help and ensuring that jobs are allocated appropriately is another way to be effective. Because essentially effectiveness in um, in providing patient safety or person safety in this case is the most important thing. So there we go, that's how you should approach a situation like this with MMIs.